So now as we continue our look at plant cells, we'll entitle this next flowchart Plant Cells 2. So we established the fact that plant cells are characteristic, are unique to plants, mainly because of the cell walls that they possess. Now we're going to look at specific types of plant cells that are going to uh, sort of coalesce and combine together to give you specific tissues with specific functions that really give us an overall understanding of plant anatomy. In addition, when we look at plant cells, what we have to understand is something that we understood in uh, when we looked at animal diversity, and it's the idea of differentiation. Plant cells are highly differentiated, or in other words, highly specialized cells. They are not simple. Many people see a plant and think it's a simple organism, but the cells that, com that, compri that it comprises of are highly, highly specialized for the following uh, reasons that we'll see as we cover these plant cells. Take a look at figure 35.10 to really see uh, visually a lot of the microscopic looks at these different types of differentiated cells as we go through them. It also provides nice descriptions that you can read along. So the first differentiated, specialized plant cell that we want to look at, group of plant cells I should say, would be the parenchyma cells. Parenchyma cells. So the root word chyma simply means an infusion and parenchyma directly translates from the Greek to the following. I had to look this up. Something poured in beside, okay? So something poured in essentially. And we're gonna see why that that makes sense. So chyma is gonna be seen a lot as we go through the plant cells. Think of that as an infusion. Parenchyma is something poured inside. I'm gonna see, really prove to you what that means in just a second as we look at, first, the characteristics of parenchyma. So these cells have the following major defining characteristics. First of all, it's the most common type of plant cell. So that's a big thing. Chances are, if you look at a plant, you're probably looking at its plant cells. If you look at it under a microscope, let's say, it's parenchyma cells, I should say. Most common plant cells, um, it has thin, parenchyma cells have thin, flexible. What was thin and flexible in our previous flowchart? Of course, the primary cell walls. Thin, flexible primary cell walls, these are not going to provide support. So the primary cell walls, no support. That should be clear because they're thin and flexible. Um, but they do not have these parenchyma cells, no secondary cell walls. So they don't have this support that the secondary cell walls provide because of the ligament. Um, another thing that we're going to look at a lot as we go through every cell type is whether or not it's alive at maturity. These cells are alive at maturity, so once they're fully developed, they are alive. There will be some that are not, and we'll see why. But for right now, these are alive at maturity. So they're going to really sort of make up a large portion of these cells that were a large portion of the plant, I should say, that we're looking at. The interesting thing about parenchyma cells is the fact that they are actually the first cells that I chose to go over and the ones that you probably went over in lecture first because they are the least specialized least specialized. I've just went over for, you know, 30 seconds that plant cells have very specialized differentiated cells. Parenchyma cells are the least specialized. Well, that's because they're going to actually form on the go. They actually are very interesting because they retain, they retain the ability to quickly differentiate. The ability to quickly differentiate, to quickly specialize. So this is, they're shapeshifters. That's what I like to think of them as. They can morph and shift their shapes in many different ways. That's why parenchyma literally translates to something that's poured in. When you pour in a fluid into whatever container, it assumes the, sh it assumes the shape of that container. Shapeshifters. These are parenchyma cells that can be poured wherever they want to be and retain their, and have that shape of wherever it's poured. Okay, so that was a okay analogy, not that great, but uh, hopefully you understood that. I think the name makes a lot of sense then. The Greeks did a good job with this type of naming, at least the taxonomist's concerns. So these are our least specialized cells here. Um, what's the basic functions that we should look at and understand? Here, the functions will be, of course, directly tied to this specialization or least specialization. Um, that's because their functions are widespread. These plants can, these plant cells, these parenchyma cells can sometimes, some of them will turn and be involved in photosynthetic functions. So some are photosynthetic. 
these will have chloroplasts, the ones that are photosynthetic. Some are going to be involved in storage, let's say. So that's the thing that the storage bucket, let's say, is what they're poured into, these parenchyma cells. The photosynthesis bucket is what these parenchyma cells are poured into. Some of them will be involved in secretion. And when we say secretion, what we mean here is that they're going to be secreting things like tannins, enzymes, hormones. Hormones will be important when we look at the actual lecture on plant hormones, nectar, uh, you name it. So storage, I forgot to mention, things like starch, oil, water, salts, all of these are different, completely different functions from one another, yet parenchyma cells can occupy these different sort of uh, realms of the function spectrum that plants need and do. And then usually when you look at fruit flesh, the actual part of fruit that most humans eat, this is actually a bunch of parenchyma cells. So that's our parenchyma cells, the least specialized. They can be poured into whatever a shape or container that they are poured into and they assume that shape. They become photosynthetic. They become storage cells or secretion cells. You name it. So very interesting group of cells. And then the other type of group of cells that we'll cover here is something known as the cholenchyma cells. So chyma means infusion and colon means glue, okay? It comes from another Greek root that means glue. So these are the glue cells of plants. They're infused together. What are their major characteristics? Let's go over them very quickly. The characteristics of colon chyma cells include the fact that they have a primary cell wall and that primary cell wall is unevenly thickened. So some points that cell wall is thick, some points it's not, so it has a varying width, that cell wall. It's not uniform in its structure. Now, cholenchyma cells will be very much elongated cells, cells that have stretched themselves out. They will also be alive at maturity. We'll see some cells that will be dead at maturity later on. They are usually going to be found near the stem surfaces and along the leaf veins. So near stem surfaces plus along the leaf veins. Okay? And they are extremely flexible. Extremely flexible. Why? Because they're glue-like. Okay, that's their sort of name, and we're going to look at this flexibility and its purpose right now because now we have these characteristics that are all going to directly establish uh, very important functions, key functions of the cholenchyma cells. What are they? Well, first of all, cholenchyma cells are going to be involved in structural support. They are glue cells, right, like we said. So they'll be involved in structural support, and they actually have no metabolic function. So that means they don't do photosynthesis at all. Their main job and their only job is to provide this glue-like structure. So with structural support, no photosynthesis. That's what no met metabolic function would mean. No cell respiration either. Um, they're going to be usually grouped in strands. So their chyma means an infusion, a collection of. So this grouping will be in strands. That's the specific term we should use here. So strands. And what that means is that they'll be usually grouped together in a cylinder shape. A 3D cylinder shape will result. Um, and this is going to be important because this will provide a good amount of support for those plants that are soft and non-woody. Support in soft plus non-woody plant organs. So those things that don't have lignin are still going to have support. Even though they don't have the lignin, they don't have the secondary primary, secondary cell walls, what they have is instead cholenchyma cells that give them this glue that provides the structure um, in this cylinder shape. Um, they have no secondary cell walls, as I already said. So that would mean that they have no lignin, CW for cell walls. So no secondary cell walls, no lignin. And then um, I think their most important function is that they provide this support, right? All this support, this glue. But glue is adaptable. It doesn't, it doesn't restrain the structure. It's, in other words, it's support without restraining growth. So something like lignin 
will restrain growth because it's so strong. It's such a strong polymer. Whereas colon chyma cells are adaptable. They're flexible. They're elongated. And they have this varying width, right? So this is going to be all encompassed in the fact that they support without restraining growth. Um, a classic example of this are celery strings. When you look at celery strings, these are essentially packaged cylinder colon chyma cells, a group of them. That's a celery string. Um, and that covers our two initial types of differentiated cells, parenchyma cells and colon chyma cells as a part of our plant anatomy.